Hello everybody, it's Joey from Universal CPA Review. In this video, we're going to go over the updates being made to the CPA exam regarding pension plan financial statement reporting. This is an area that the CPA exam has changed drastically, and it's going to be one that now merely wants you to understand pension plan financial statement reporting requirements, meaning we are no longer talking about the employer side of the financial statements. This means no crazy pension calculations anymore. Okay, so this is good news for you. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel or ask to join any of our Facebook study groups. There you'll find helpful visuals and tips for any section of the CPA exam. And you can find links to those in the description below. And feel free to tell your friends too, we're here to help. If you consider yourself more of a visual learner and wanna join our program in a more permanent way, feel free to give Universal CPA Review a try for free today. Our program comes with a systematic problem solving approach for every single topic. And what's even cooler is that every single one of our multiple choice questions and task-based simulations come with video explanations. So if that sounds like something you're into, feel free to apply discount code UNIVERSAL2021 for 25% off any Universal CPA Review product. Okay, enough of that. Let's talk pensions. Pension reporting is the name of the game for this module, and this is an area that is really going to address question number one of our primary questions, which is where is something going to get reported? Right, the pension topic for this exam no longer requires that we calculate comprehensive pension calculations. Now rather, we're going to be primarily focused on the financial statements related to both defined benefit pension plans and defined contribution plans. Okay, so our mental map is going to be very straightforward for this topic. Step one is going to be determining the differences in defined benefit plans and defined contribution plans. And we're going to go ahead and star step two, because this is really where the exam wants to focus your attention. And that's going to be understanding the differences in the required financial statements for pension plan reporting. Okay, but before we dive into all that, let's quickly understand the differences in defined benefit plans and defined contribution plans. Okay, so as we go through this, keep in mind that we're going to be explaining the intuition behind this. So when you see a question on the exam, you're going to have this visual in your head. You're going to remember our characters. Okay, but also keep in mind that the exam isn't going to be quite as focused on your understanding of the differences in what a defined benefit plan versus a defined contribution plan is. Okay, but that being said, there's always going to be that chance that you see a question that requires that you understand the key characteristics of both of these plans. All right, but keep in mind, the big picture here is going to be focused on how these are going to present their financial statements. Okay, so let's start by meeting Jay the Janitor and Altruistic Al, who's the CEO of Generous Hospitality. Okay, so Generous Hospitality is a publicly traded company, and the CEO, Altruistic Al, is starting to feel a little bit generous. Okay, so Altruistic Al is looking to start a pension plan for his employees that have been so loyal throughout the years, all right? So when Altruistic Al makes the decision as to what type of pension plan he'd like to start, he's going to choose between a defined benefit plan and a defined contribution plan. Okay, so he's going to be a little bit curious as to the difference between the two. So that's when you're going to come in as the financial reporting expert to tell him what's going on here. All right, so you're going to tell Al, look, Al, no matter which plan you choose, think of this pension plan as its own separate entity. Okay, so this separate entity is going to have to present its financial statements apart from your company's financial statements. So you need to know on the exam that financial statement preparation for pension plan reporting is going to be slightly different than financial statement preparation for normal financial statement preparation. Okay, so we need to be aware of the names that are slightly different for pension plan reporting. Okay, so at the end of the day, we have two options here. We have a defined benefit plan and a defined contribution plan. So you're gonna tell Al, look Al, if you're gonna start a defined benefit plan, it's not going to be as black and white as simply making contributions and calling it a day. Okay, so this is going to require that you assume a little bit more risk and it's also going to require that the pension plan reports more financial statements than if this was a defined contribution plan. So Al's going to be more interested in the risk that is being assumed. So the reason that the defined benefit plan is going to require that the company assumes more risk is because instead of just making contributions to Jay the janitor's retirement plan, or even requiring that Jay makes those contributions on an annual basis, a defined benefit plan can be thought of as making an annuity payment. So once Jay the janitor retires, he's going to be collecting these annuity payments every single year for the rest of his life. Okay, so the employer is going to make this guaranteed payment in annuity every single year once the employee retires, right? Altruistic Al is going to be like, look, after you retire, we're going to pay you $40,000 per year every year for the rest of your life. Okay, so why is this not as great for the employer? Because that means they need to make this annuity payment every single year, right? They got to make sure that they have enough cash to even make this happen. 
And why this could be better for the employee is because they're going to have that guaranteed fixed amount every single year for the rest of their life once they retire. And that is why the employer would be assuming the risk in this situation. Now, if this was a defined contribution pension plan, then this would be thought of more so as a contribution payment, not an annuity payment. So the employer would simply make a contribution payment to the employee's contribution plan every single year. This could be thought of as your 401k, right, your traditional IRA. Okay, so very often, the employee is going to have to contribute to their own plan. And the employer might say something like, we'll match 6% of your paycheck as our contribution to your traditional 401k. So why this is not as great for the employee is because they're not going to be receiving that guaranteed annuity payment now. Okay, so Jay the janitor is going to have to pay his own money to even contribute to this retirement. Okay, but this is going to be good for altruistic Al because all he has to do is worry about making those contribution payments on an annual basis. He doesn't need to make sure that he's staying completely liquid so that he can make those annuity payments every single year. So at the end of the day, you could think of a defined contribution plan as the employee assuming the risk, not the employer. So now let's dive in to the meat and potatoes of this module, and ultimately what the exam is going to focus primarily on. Okay, so this is step two in our mental map. So as we mentioned, this is an entity in itself, right? This is separate from the company's financial statements that are being reported. So we have generous hospitality financial statements, and then we have the pension plan financial statements. So obviously we're focusing on the pension plan financial statements, but point being is that they're separate, okay? So at the end of the day, there are two financial statements that are going to be required for both of these pension plans. As we said, we have defined benefit plans and defined contribution plans. Okay, so the two financial statements that are required for both plans are going to sound very similar, all right? So we have the statement of net assets available for benefits, and we have the statement of changes in net assets available for benefits. Okay, so net assets is the key word here. That's our buzzword, right? So the reality is defined benefit plans will also include a couple other financial statements that will be required. And yes, you should be familiar with those. But the two primary financial statements that the exam likes to focus on is going to be these two right here. Okay, so real quick run through through both of these financial statements, and then we'll walk through what they look like. The statement of net assets available for benefits shows the pension plan's total assets less its total liabilities which will equal the total net assets available for benefits. And this is generally going to be shown for the last two years. Okay, so assets minus liabilities equals net assets available for benefits. That sounds a lot like a balance sheet to me. Okay, so in the same way that assets minus liabilities could equal stockholders' equity, these assets minus these liabilities will equal net assets available for net benefits. Okay, so let's sound that out. Net assets available for benefits to me sounds like the remaining assets after we have accounted for their associated liabilities. Okay, so now we have these net assets that are now available to be distributed to former employees once they've retired. Okay, so this is still an investment account. So it could be your investment account that is set up at Vanguard or maybe at Chuck Schwab. But the reality is these are investment assets that are sitting in this account. So if you take a look at these financial statements, you might see that the assets seem a lot like investment-related assets. Okay, so a lot of them are going to be considered receivables. Okay, so we have both employer and employee contributions. Okay, so a contribution made by Generous Hospitality and or a contribution made by Jay the Janitor. This can also include notes receivable from participants. It could also include interest and dividends. All right, so we have our accrued expenses, our administrative expenses, and our accounts payable as an example of our liabilities. Okay, but as you see, once we have reduced all of our liabilities that are associated with our total assets, we now have our net assets that are available for benefits. So this is the total amount that is available to pay employees when they retire. Okay, boom, we talked about our balance sheet. Now let's talk about our other financial statement that you really need to hone in on. And as we said, it sounds very similar. So it's going to be easy to remember. Okay, so again, these are the two financial statements that are required for both defined benefit plans and defined contribution plans. Okay, so the second financial statement is the statement of changes in net assets available for benefits. Okay, so keyword here is changes. So when you're thinking about this, it sounds almost identical to the statement of net assets available for benefits, but we're sneaking in the word changes, right? So when we're talking about the changes in these account balances, right, the changes in the net assets available for benefits, we're talking about the changes from the beginning of the year net assets to the end of the year net assets. So this can either be an increase or a decrease to that beginning balance. 
right? We have our total contributions and total additions that are made, right? So additions could be like the return on the investment from whatever was invested in that Chuck Schwab or Vanguard account, right? Maybe it bought some Facebook stock. Maybe they're heavy into Amazon. At the end of the day, this is going to include interest income, could be dividend income, could be realized gains or losses or unrealized gains or losses. Okay, but this can also include contributions made to the plan. So if Altruistic Al and Generous Hospitality contributed to this plan, that's going to be an increase to the total assets that are available, right? The whole point of the contribution is to eventually distribute it. Same goes for employee contributions, right? If Jay the janitor goes ahead and withholds a portion of his paycheck and puts it in this investment account, that's a contribution made. That's an increase to the amount available for future distributions. Okay, and it's going to be reduced again by the actual deductions that occur throughout the year, right? Maybe a distribution was made. Now that's less money that is available for distribution in the future. Okay, but at the end of the day, we have our total additions less our total deductions to result in either a net increase or a net decrease to the plan assets that are available. So in this case, we have a net increase. So it's going to increase our beginning of the year balance. And this amount represents the changes in the total amount that is now available to pay retired employees in the future. Okay, so the ending balance is the new amount that becomes available for future distributions. Okay, so as we mentioned, defined benefit plans and defined contribution plans will both require these two primary financial statements. But as you can see in our chart, defined benefit plans also have some additional required financial statements that should be disclosed. Right, the primary objective of a plan's financial statements is to provide information that is useful in assessing the plan's present and future ability to pay benefits that are due. This objective is going to require the presentation of information about the plan's economic resources and a measure of the participant's accumulated benefits. Right, ultimately, this is information that is going to be regarding certain factors that affect the year to year change in these accumulated benefits that we're talking about. Right. Ultimately, these are benefits that are owed to Jay the janitor and whoever else is working for this company that qualifies for these pension benefits for both current services that they are performing as well as past services that they had performed. Okay, so these are the benefits that are accumulating. Okay, so keep these two additional financial statements in mind when you're thinking about defined benefit plans. All right, so also going to require the statement of accumulated plan benefits and the statement of changes in accumulated plan benefits. All right, something sneaky to note is that the statement of cash flows will never be presented in either of these two pension plans. All right, so statement of cash flows not going to be required. Now, this company, Generous Hospitality, could consider providing a statement of cash flows if they feel that the statement provides relevant information about the ability to pay plan benefits when they become due. Okay, maybe they're putting their money in something that is not very highly liquid, right? An illiquid asset could be long-term property. Right, in which case, perhaps the statement of cash flows would be beneficial to present to demonstrate that it has the cash inflows on hand to pay benefits as they become due. Okay, but at the end of the day, not going to be mission critical. So we got to remember the differences in defined benefit versus defined contribution plans. We got to remember that the employer is going to assume the risk under a defined benefit plan. Right, Think of this as the annuity payment and think of generous hospitality that is required to pay Jay the janitor every year for the rest of his life under a defined benefit plan, and think of the defined contribution plan as Jay the janitor assuming the risk. Right? All this is is a contribution that is made every single year. Now, that contribution could be made by both Jay the janitor and generous hospitality, but long story short, this is going to be less risk for the company that is presenting these pension financial statements. Okay, but most importantly, we got to remember the two primary financial statements that are going to be presented for both defined benefit plans and defined contribution plans. That's the statement of net assets available for benefits and the statement of changes in net assets available for benefits. All right, we got to remember that mental map. Now let's go back and apply this to a few questions.